Time for another piano puzzler. Bruce Adolph is here with me in the Mod Moon Warehouser Music Studio. Hi, Bruce. Hi, Fred. Every week, Bruce takes a familiar tune. He rewrites that tune in the style of a great classical composer. We get one, or in this case, two of our listeners on the phone who listen to Bruce's puzzler, then try to name the hidden tune and the composer Bruce has in mind. Janie Wittenberg and Andrew are on the line from Cincinnati, and your husband and wife, is that right? Correct. <laughs> Correct. Great to have you both. Janie, hi, and Andrew, welcome. Thank you. We're happy to be here. Oh, it's wonderful to have the two of you. And Andrew, I understand that you're a music scholar working on your PhD. Is that right? I am. I'm studying music theory and finishing up my PhD at the University of Cincinnati's College Conservatory of Music. Oh, that's fantastic. And what's your focus on your PhD? I'm studying the history and theory of barbershop harmony in the United States. Wow, <laughs> that is a wonderful topic. So barbershop quartets and the like, the, the history and theory of this, I guess a lot of people know about it, but nobody ever thinks about it and in that scholarly way. I love that. That's fantastic. And Janie, what's the role of music in your life? Well, I mean, I grew up in a household that loved music, that literally played music all the time, um, so I have a huge background in it, um, but I don't have the formal uh, scholastic uh, background that my husband does, uh, so I've just been playing piano since middle school and just enjoying music uh, for all my life. Oh, that's wonderful. And Andrew, I'll just ask you, are you just a scholar of barbershop, or do you sing also? Oh, I'm also an avid singer, arranger, uh, and coach in uh, barbershop chorus, as well as uh, quartetting. Okay, well, maybe as we go trying to figure out the piano puzzler, maybe um, you can you can sing some tunes for us, and you and I can try to do some close harmony, okay? <laughs> Fantastic. Okay, I'd love excellent. That. <laughs> excellent. Okay. Okay, I don't know what's coming either. I doubt the two of you will need any help, but if you need some brainstorming help, I'm on standby for you, Okay. Fabulous. <laughs> okay, excellent. Janie and Andrew, here's Bruce Adolph with your piano puzzler. Andrew? Very much so. Excellently played, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> so, Janie, Andrew, any thoughts about either the hidden tune or the composer Bruce might have in mind? Um, I kind of had some strong, like, Chopin vibes at the beginning. Um, I'm still thinking about the tune, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. which is usually something I try to focus on the, when attempting the puzzlers. Um, but that didn't stick out to me on this first round. Um, so, but I am wondering if maybe some romantic influences. 
So Chopin vibes. I, I would say, well, it's not Chopin. Chopin did every day play the music of this composer to warm mm-hmm. up. So maybe... It's definitely uh, definitely modeled after a piece that, that's one of those that you're like, I've heard it, but not really sure what the title is, at least not under the pressure of a national <laughs> broadcast. Yeah, you know, you know, when I said Chopin played this composer every day, I, I'm not kidding, every day, according to his diaries, he didn't, you know, he didn't actually like Beethoven that much. Isn't oh. that a strange thing? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, he, he liked some slow movements of Beethoven. Okay. But he had a lot of trouble with, with the whole... So it's somebody Chopin knew, admired... Well, maybe not knew, no. Knew oh, musically. Okay. He knew the music <laughs> yeah. of this person. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, Chopin wrote a lot of preludes. He did. Oh, oh my goodness. This is Bach. Yes, yes. Ah, it is Bach. Bach. Yeah, yes. Johann Sebastian yeah, Bach. It came out. It was just mouthing. He's like, I think it's Bach. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Johann Sebastian Bach. Bruce, is that right? It is. Okay. In fact, this opening two beats is the beginning of of, of a famous prelude. The first of the preludes from the collection called the Well Tempered Clavier. Yeah, it's Bach. number one. Oh no, book one. I should have known that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and basically the entire puzzler uses the configurations of prelude number one from book number one, but then the harmonies are uh, a little different, and the tune is completely different because you know Bach in that case wasn't really writing a tune; he was just writing a chord progression and a and a kind of mm-hmm. a preluding thing that you might even improvise. Okay, so the, so now that we know that this is modeled after a Bach prelude. I'm thinking that I, I'm remembering that sometimes Bruce, when you've done Bach preludes, the tune is not necessarily on top. True, it's kind of in the voicing somewhere. And yeah, it's you know it's funny because it's a little barbershoppy in that uh, you know the highest voice is not necessarily singing the tune, the melody. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and in this case. Um, it isn't even that there are clear voices. You know, Bach did this incredible kind of writing called polyphonic melody, in which a, a single line unfolds and gives you the feeling of several tunes going on at the same time, but it's just one line. So uh, let me play a little tiny bit of the, uh, okay. this, a couple of phrases. And the tune is woven into this polyphonic, which means multi, uh, multi-layered, polyphonic single line of imitating Bach's style of doing that. But the tune, of course, is completely different. Okay, I find this helpful. Like, okay, now we know it's Bach. Now we can focus on trying to pick out the tune. So, Janie and Andrew, I don't know about you, but I would be helped by hearing this again, maybe the whole thing again. Sure, sure. Oh, yes, please. (laughs) Okay, okay. Here it comes.
well, it's beautiful, whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you find it bewildering to try to figure out what this is? Oh, oh that might be a clue. <laughs> Considering how rarely I use that word, I would say. <laughs> you know, it's, I'm... Is it... Oh, go ahead, go I ahead. Don't know. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I, was, I can't think of the name of the song. Um, uh, Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered Am I. That, yeah, um, that's more than the name of the song. It's just Bewitched, oh, that, Bothered, and Bewildered. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fabulous. There it yeah. is. You know, what I find funny about it, it that's also three Bs, just like Bach, Beethoven, <laughs> Bewitched, Bothered, and Bewildered. You know, this is Bach and we already your humming in that interval is so unique. And I was thinking, I know, like, I know this is in a song I played, and I cannot think of what the <laughs> actually tune is. You said, but Bewildered. I'm like, oh, well, there it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's always there, but it, you know, as I say, because I'm imitating Bach's way of weaving a melody into a single line, you know, you have to follow it closely. Wow. Now, now, I really want to hear you unpack this, Bruce, because I was fascinated just watching my own attention. Like, for a while, all I could hear was the first note of every chord change. And I thought, that must be where the tune is. But then I was like, no, 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 no. There's a tune happening mm-hmm. somewhere else, but I can't quite pick it okay, out. Okay, <laughs> okay. Well, you know, the, the tune... And then it goes... Right? Yes. So that doesn't belong there, right? <laughs> and then that's the second one, and then here it comes. <laughs> so I'm, I'm really slamming it out now. <laughs> I, I adapted the harmony, um, and uh, I changed it a little bit because it would be. But Bach would not use that chord there, and I decided to just change it from a half diminished chord, which he does use, but he wouldn't use it there, to a full diminished. So here, the tune is a little bit different, but now it comes back. starts again and you know it's a little syncopated because that had that note has to be by itself so instead of going it goes body bewitched bothered and bewildered and then the cadence is Bach Instead of just that, I gave it one more. <laughs> Bewitched. <laughs> All right. Th- this is just yeah, amazing on so many levels. Yeah, I think it was the, it was, I heard the Bewitched and then the, um, um, am I? That's such a unique um, yeah. uh, interval. I was like, I know this song somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> But it was so just wonderfully woven in there. It was almost impossible to hear in the middle of that texture. Yes, yes. I had a hard time pulling it out of... Because well, now I can't unhear it now right, that I know. Right, But, <laughs> But the first time through and even the second time through, like, my brain has to kind of shift the time and the yeah. harmony, yeah. and it's slower than it would be. <laughs> Oh, who's that? <laughs> now this is that something. Would be our two puppies, Dorian and Lydian. Dorian, oh, Dorian and Lydian, your two miniature schnauzers. <laughs> this is now. This is how much of a musical household you are because you named your two 
miniature schnauzers after musical modes. The Dorian mode. (laughs) And the Lydian mode. (laughs) And as an ode to our love of barbershop, we also nickname her Lida Rose. (laughs) Oh, Lida Rose. That's good, Lydian and Lida Rose. That's very nice. Fantastic. But yes, sorry about that interruption. (laughs) No, that's great. All family members welcome, absolutely. (laughs) They didn't help us out that much in the puzzle, though. (laughs) No, no. I've, I've had such a good time with this and unpacking this, and I know we've gone a little longer than usual, but now that we know... I would love to hear this again. It's bewitched, bothered, and bewildered in the style of Bach and after the first of these preludes, the C major prelude from the first book of the Well-Tempered Clavier by Bach. Ah, Bruce, could we hear this one more time? Yes, and I will not pound out the tune this time. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks. Something just occurred to me. Yeah. (laughs) Okay, now you're bringing Wagner's Tristan chord into the mix. What's going on here? It's just that when this happens, and then da da da, we get da 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 da. It fits beautifully. Okay, Bruce, my mind is already blown just from putting together this tune and the Bach, and now Wagner's getting in the mix. (laughs) Yeah, well. (laughs) I mean, this is part of what's so amazing and fun about piano puzzlers is these unexpected collisions, like the gears mesh in unexpected but such satisfying ways like this. Oh yeah, we we love puzzlers and, and this show. So do whatever you want. We are we are just thrilled to be a part of this. <laughs> well, Janie Wittenberg and Andrew, what a treat having you on today's piano puzzler calling in from Cincinnati. Uh, it's bewitched, bothered, and bewildered in the style of Bach and modeled after the very first of the preludes, the C major prelude from Book One of Bach's Well Tempered Clavier. When you're not calling in and playing on the air, how do the two of you and Dorian and Lydian share piano puzzlers? Well, we follow on Spotify um, as the podcast gets uploaded, but um, also we'll sometimes catch it live on WGUC. WGUC, one of the great classical stations in the country right there in Cincinnati. Andrew, good luck with your PhD uh, with the rest of that. And I can't wait to see your dissertation about Barbershop Quartet History and Harmonies. (laughs) Thank you so much, and uh, thank you for the opportunity. Such a fun show. Absolutely. A pleasure to have you. And Janie, thank you so much. All right. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. You too. And Bruce, I'll see you next week. Bye, Fred. <laughs>